Let's talk about keystone constructive response questions. You've done a couple in algebra class previously. The keystone, kind of a big deal. Pennsylvania Department of Education makes the claim that students worthy of a high school diploma should be able to answer these questions adequately. The worst possible scores you can get on a constructive response are NR and OT. That stands for no response or off topic. It's better to get a zero than one of those scores. But we want you getting threes and fours. Today is your blessed day, though. I know a guy who knows a guy who stole the answer key to one of the constructive responses you did in algebra class recently, and I'm going to go over that solution from start to finish. Now, your algebra teacher isn't accepting responses anymore, but I'm going to give you a problem like the one you already did there. You're going to finish it here. It'll count for this class, and I'm going to send the scores to your algebra teacher. If you score higher on this one than you did on the original, your score can go up in algebra class as well. Two for the price of one doesn't get much better than that. Four people each deliver food to people's homes. Curtis, one of them, charges a flat fee of $2.50 for each delivery, plus $0.20 cents per mile. For one delivery, Curtis drives six miles. You're going to find a lot of problems like this in algebra, where there's a starting value or a flat fee or a one-time price, and then another value that gets repeated. How much does Curtis charge to deliver the food? We got a couple of different methods we could use. You could just, we're going six miles, 20 cents per mile. Start with that value and add six twenties to it. So it looks like we're charging 370. Or I could also think of this as five twenties makes a dollar, 370. Now that's sufficient to show my work. Obviously, the other possibly quicker method I could use if I'm on a calculator is 250 plus 20 cents times 6. That'll give me the same information because multiplication is just repeated addition. So two different ways that I could do that, but basic idea, you got your one-time fee, that gets added to your repeated fee times how many times are you going to repeat it. Pretty simple, pretty basic, easy one point. Got to make sure you show your work, though. Audrey charges a flat fee of $4 for each of the delivery, plus a certain amount that we don't know, in dollars per mile for each mile she drives. For a distance of 30 miles, Curtis and Audrey charge the same amount. How much does Audrey charge in dollars per mile? Show or explain your work. Again, a couple different ways that we could handle this. One thing that you're going to have to be careful of is that you realize this answer up here, 370, doesn't really come into play in Part B, but all the other information does. So Curtis is still charging 250 plus 20 cents per mile. So one thing that I could do is find out how much does Curtis charge for 30 miles. That'll be 250 plus 30 miles times 20 cents per mile. And we got, I think we're going to come out with $8.50. All right, that's how much Curtis charges for 30 miles. Now, beautiful thing is, now we know what Audrey charges for 30 miles as well, because they, they charge the same amount. We know Audrey starts her initial value her flat rate is $4, and she charges some unknown amount for those for each mile, but we know that the answer is still going to come out as $8.50. This right here looks like a nice, easy, two-step algebra equation like you've been working on. If I want to figure out what the question mark is, I can subtract 4. I'll have 30 times something equals 450, and then I can divide by 30. And that something equals 0.15 or 15 cents. 
right, a different way that I could think of this. Curtis is charging two fifty as his flat fee. Audrey is charging four dollars as her flat fee. The difference between what they're charging and the beginning is one dollar fifty cents. So somehow, if they're gonna end up at the same amount in thirty miles, Curtis needs to make up that amount of money. He needs to catch up by a dollar fifty in thirty miles. If I divide this dollar fifty by thirty miles, that means each mile Curtis has to charge a dollar fifty divided by thirty is point zero five five cents. He has to charge five cents extra or five cents more than what she charges so that he can catch up. Okay, so if he's charging five extra cents. Curtis charges 20 cents per mile. That's five more than what she's charging. That's a different way that you could come out with a 15 cents. Those aren't the only two pathways. They're the only two that I'm going to show. Point of the matter is there are always multiple pathways to get to a solution. But if your pathway is correct, you're getting to the same solution. Get to a different solution. Something's wrong with the pathway. The amounts of money Peter and Maria each charge to deliver food are described below. Peter charges a flat fee of $3.75 for each delivery plus $0.10 cents per mile. Maria charges $2.25 for each delivery plus $0.25 cents per mile. Peter says there are two distances for which he and Maria charge the same amount. To prove Peter's not correct, Maria graphs a line for her delivery charges and a line for Peter's delivery charges. Each line represents the relationship between the amount Y in dollars each person charges for a delivery and the distance x in miles each drives for the delivery without showing the graph explain how maria's graph of the two lines proves peter's not correct all right that's a that's a whole mouthful of information there kind of hard to unwrap it i don't know that i could answer this question without at least having a picture of the graph in my mind but I actually would want to put the graph down on paper. So I see what Maria's looking at, what she's talking about, and I can then answer this question. Now, they said without showing the graph, which means I'll lose points showing the graph. But I'm allowed to use scrap paper. So I could grab a piece of scrap paper and make a graph. Before I make a graph, I'm going to make a table, actually. So we have distance. How much does Maria charge? How much does Peter charge? Maria charges 25 cents per mile at, at the first mile she'll she'll be at 250 so we got 250 for one mile 275 for two miles two or three dollars for three miles 325 for four all right those are the prices for maria and now let's do the same thing with peter Peter starts at 375 and does 10 cents per mile, so he'll be at 385 at the first mile. And then we add 10 cents each time. Okay, good. We don't have to go past this. At the 10th mile, they are charging the same amount. How would this look on a graph? I'm going to make a very crude graph. Distance, money. Maria starts low at 250 and adds a little bit each time. So her graph is going to look like this. Peter starts at a higher price, 385, but his, his growth rate is smaller. Now, there will come a certain point where, at 10 miles, both of those lines cross each other. It represents the time right here where they are charging the same amount. Because Maria's line is growing faster, though, after that point, Peter's line will never be able to catch up with hers again. So they get closer and closer together until they meet. And then they start diverging again, getting farther away from each other. So I can just answer the question.
that's basically what's happening, right? Because the slope of his line is gentler and hers is steeper, she catches up to him pretty quickly, surpasses, and then he never can catch up again. In general, lines only do three possible things. They cross each other, straight lines, in a plane, cross each other one time, or never cross each other if they're parallel, or rare situation, you got two different equations that are actually the same equation, and the two lines overlap each other all the time. They, they always are crossing each other. Those are the only three situations that you can have when you have two lines in a plane. So I would be able to, to answer the question without drawing the specific line and say lines can only cross each other once. If two lines are distinct, they can only cross each other once. They can therefore only be charging the same value one time. But this is better because normally when they ask questions, they're going to want you to tell them that you know this value as well. You know when is the time that they crossed each other.